ARCA Remax Racing has rolled into Indiana on the wheels of nine-time champion Frank Himmel, who for years has been the familiar face of this series in Winner's Circle. But the future may just be defending race winner Justin Allgaier, whose experience in getting to victory lane hasn't yet put a wrinkle on his youthful forehead, but he may have some concern for the wild card today. Cup veteran Ken Schrader showed up to race, and that's going to make it a very interesting afternoon. The ARCA Remax Series debuts next on MAV-TV. Welcome to an historic event, the debut of ARCA Remax Series Racing here on MAV-TV. And it brings us to Salem Speedway in Indiana for the Kentuckiana Ford Dealers 200. I'm Brian Drever, the race car driver sitting next to me is Mike Miller. And Mike, what a great place to be for a race. What a great old racetrack, one of the very best racetracks in the country. Uh, it is tons of fun if the car is working right, and it's a long day if it's not. A little bit chilly here, but you know what? They're going to go racing anyway, and Don Radabaugh is with the pole sitter. In 46th career ARCA Remax Series starts, Ken Schrader's been to victory lane 15 times, but only once here at Salem Speedway, and that was 10 years ago. Schrader, how difficult will, it, will be the job today? Well, I'll have to get back with you. I don't know for sure, but, uh, you know, last three or four years we've come here and had to start in the back because of being at Phoenix, so this time at least we're starting the day off a little bit better. Absolutely. Schrader rolls off from the pole, his 14th career ARCA Remax Series Pole Award. Ken Schrader is not afraid to climb behind the wheel of a race car anywhere, anytime. Somebody drops a dollar in the seat, he's going to be there. Alongside him will be Matt Carter. Look at Formula One driver Scott Speed back there in the number five spot. A nine-time champ Frank Kimmel will start seventh. A lot of great drivers, all of whom are going to be trying to put their name in the record books here at Salem Speedway. The other thing I've noticed is that there's uh, 20 cars within one second, so I, you know, I'm, I'm expecting a, a very competitive race. Good close racing has always been one of the earmarks here in ARCA Racing. James Hilton, longtime veteran, back there on the back. A lot of guys and even a couple of women drivers will be in the field, some of whom had to take provisional starts as they roll out onto the racetrack. We've got another big story brewing here because it is not only the debut of our coverage on MAV-TV, it is also the debut of radial tires on these ARCA cars. And for more on that, let's go back downstairs to Don Radabaugh. Story of the weekend here at Salem Speedway, without question, tires. First time ever for the ARCA Remax Series on the radial tire here in the short track world. How will it behave? We don't really know. Temperatures have been very cold today, hovering about 40 degrees. It has been raining all afternoon. Plus, there is a tire rule with the new radial. Teams get only 10 tires to work with, and that includes the four that are already on the car. The new short track radial debuts here at Salem Speedway. Well, Mike Miller, what do you think of all that? Well, I like bias tires uh, better because it puts the uh, control of the race car more firmly in the hands of the driver. Well, radial tires, those seem to be the way it's going these days, certainly in street cars and apparently much more on the racetrack, too. That uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing. Okay, then. Mike Miller has stated his point. We are going to see how it all works out here at Salem Speedway. We uh, also know that because of the conditions, you can see that Don Radabaugh is all bundled up, and so are the fans. And with that, let's go back down quickly to Don. Well, as the final cars roll off the grid here at Salem Speedway to start the race, trouble for the five car of Bobby Gearhart, the five-time Daytona winner. Hood up on the five car, and it won't fire, at least for now. We'll keep you posted. Got to be a driver's worst nightmare, Mike, sitting there on, the, uh, in, on pit road, and the field's getting ready to go. Well, yes, and uh, they had the uh, engine fired this morning and all warmed up, and now it won't start. I mean, it's just terrible. Well, the only uh, consolation he might get is that the race is going to start, and there it goes, under yellow. A little bit of an anticlimactic situation, but in order to make sure that the track is ready to race, they're going to go slowly around and try to dry it off just a little bit. Meanwhile, Bobby Gerhardt sitting down on pit road, and he's going to have to hurry to get going. Let's go back to Don. 
1955, the ARCA Remax Series has been a staple on the schedule here at Salem Speedway. In fact, no other track in the history of this series has appeared more on the schedule than right here at Salem Speedway. You're about ready to enjoy the 83rd running of the ARCA Remax Series at one of the legendary short tracks in the country. Salem Speedway should be a great, great show, as always. The ARCA REMAX Series is being brought to you by REMAX, serving your real estate needs above the crowd. And by Lucas Oil Products, made in the USA and sold to the world. Nine-time ARCA REMAX Series champion Frank Kimmel has been to Victory Lane at Salem Speedway eight times, but it hasn't been since 2004, four long years since the hometown favorite Frank Kimmel has gone to Victory Lane at Salem Speedway. He's in a new ride, his own Kimmel Racing Team, and after debuting at Daytona in the Dodge, he's back in the Ford. Will he get to Victory Lane here today? We'll soon find out. Well, it's going to take not very long because the pace car is dropping down on pit road. The ARCA officials have determined that the track is ready to go, and the fans are certainly ready for racing as Matt Carter in that Stein C, number 46, jumps from the outside of the front row to drop in front of pole sitter Ken Schrader, and the two of them have pulled away from the rest of the field here as they head down the back stretch. Pretty good start, though, for the two front row guys, and the rest of the field is trying to catch up to them. Mike Miller, early laps of the race, what are you trying to accomplish here? Well, you're trying to find out if the uh, tires are going to stick, you know, especially as cold as it is. I mean, it just, it just kind of settling in just a little bit. Matt Carter and Ken Schrader making it a two-car race right now. We've got problems uh, and, and a one car going down onto pit road. The rest of the field, starting with Dexter Bean in the 37, has really got to pedal to see if they can't catch up there and get in contention in this thing. How do you get left that far behind in the first lap of the race? Here they go with Allgaier right there behind him. So these two guys, everybody's kind of got a dance partner now as they run around Salem Speedway. Doesn't take long to make a lap around this high-speed, high-bank track. Well, and it's uh, the both ends of the racetrack are so different that you can't uh, get the car uh, set up to be perfect on one end. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a, always a compromise. A lot of cars still going kind of slowly down around the bottom as uh, early problems have reared their head for some of these drivers. But it looks as though most of them have gotten up to speed pretty quickly here. They're sorting themselves out a little bit as we see that second pair of cars trying to chase down the leaders. The leaders being the front row starters, Matt Carter and Ken Schrader up front. Now they're starting to go nose to tail. Everybody's getting a little more confidence, I think, in these brand new radial tires and not under the best of conditions. It looks like uh, Kenny is uh, falling back just a little bit. That would be Kenny Schrader, the pole sitter here, who, as he said, is used to starting in the back because he almost always has to take a provisional of some kind. At least he was able to start up front by qualifying fastest. Here we've got a move for third position as the number 16, Justin Allgaier, in that AG Tech Hoosier Midwest Chevrolet is making a move. And he's trying to get through down on the low side. Dexter Bean in the 37 car is right there with him. But uh, right now, Bean still holds the advantage. We're seeing a lot of these guys backing off the throttle, going into the turns. A little bit of flame coming out of the exhaust pipes. Still early going. Trying to stay warm, no doubt, even inside that car. Well, uh, you can get fully alongside the guy going down the back stretch, going into three. And if you don't have it completely cleared, uh, and if you're not paying a lot of attention, there's going to be a big wreck. So it's difficult to pass here for many reasons, not the least of which, as you said, both ends of the racetrack, therefore the setup are completely different. Which is, is it safe to say it's a compromise? It's absolutely a compromise on the handling. There's the number one car of Tom Hessert the third on the Mako Auto Painting car going through as we're still taking a look at the field. Kind of stretched out. We're not seeing a lot of passing. There's Scott Speed in 10th position. He uh, started in fifth, so he dropped back a little bit, probably trying to get a handle on just how these big heavy race cars are compared to uh, the Formula One, the very, very, very quick Formula One cars that he drove sometime earlier in his career. The 22 of Ken Butler is right there. And that Red Bull car is pretty easy to spot. Scott Speed in the Red Bull Toyota with uh, car owner Eddie Sharp. Up front we go once again. Peeking in on the number 46 of Matt Carter. Boy, he's in some heavy traffic. And how do you deal with this? You're trying to hold off Ken Schrader and pass guys in front of you. 
Well, you just hope that the guys that you're uh, lapping stay down so that you can pass them on the outside. Well, the flagman does display that blue flag with the crossed orange bars on it, telling the lap riders or about to be lap riders that the leaders are approaching. Most of them will move over and extend that courtesy, but Mike, they're racing for position just like everybody else. Yep, but they're going to lap down. I mean, they, they try really hard for a couple laps to uh, stay on the lead lap, hoping for a caution. Uh, but eventually, you got to yield to the leader because he's that much faster. The leader, Matt Carter, goes around a French driver, uh, Michael Disdier from Nice, France, riding in a Jack Bauscher and Associates Ford. Here we have three wide. Yep, three wide racing. Sometimes, well, as a fan, you always like to see that. I think as a race car driver, it's not necessarily the most comforting thought, is it? Especially being in the middle. Yeah, exactly, in the middle. And look at this big parade we've got going around the high line. Uh -oh. Somebody's trouble. sideways, and there's one of those big wrecks you talked about. With that, oh, wow. this is a very big wreck. They the track have, is completely blocked. They have locked up and closed up and completely blocked the entire track over on the backside. This is going to require some fairly vigorous attention by the ARCA officials. We're starting to see some cars moving out of the smoke, but quite a few cars are not moving at all. There's the 23 of Brandon Kelly trying to pick out some numbers. The 45 of uh, Michael Phelps. Out of Sewanee, Georgia, a few damaged cars are starting to move, but it's really just a tangled up mess right now. And Don Radabaugh is hot footed it over there to the scene of the crime. Don? Yep. Big mess on the back stretch. It started with when the one car of Tom Hesser Jr. and the 14 car got together, turned the 14 car around sideways on the track and caused this big mess. Seven cars initially involved as some of the drivers begin to climb out. Well, Mike, if the worst nightmare was the hood up on the car before the start, this is an even worse nightmare. Boy, notably the number 93, Justin Lofman, he just had nowhere to go when those first two cars got turned around, and it is a melee out there. Yikes, what a mess. Here's the 41 car. You can see the driver of that one, and he's pretty upset. Throwing the gloves back inside, Josh Clemens is uh, out of the race, apparently. That is a very heavily damaged race car. The ARCA officials dragging spare parts down, and the drivers... That springs know. and everything. Yikes. Oh, man. These, these guys know they're out of this race, and that's a very short day here at Salem. Heavy damage on both ends of the 37 of Dexter Bean, who had been battling for third position. And, Mike, this... Yeah, uh, he, he, aerodynamically challenged. Oh, yeah. He got shot from both ends. Watch the 37 car here, Mike, and he's trying to stay out of trouble. Just gets turned and hit from both sides. Ouch. Into the wall, into the nose, the... Bad deal. Everything is going wrong here. Somehow Frank Kimmel got through this mess, though, Don Radabaugh. Well, the Mako Collision and Repair Auto Painting car caught a piece of the action, as you can tell. Plenty of it. It'll need a little Mako when this one's done. Let's talk to the driver real quick. Tom Hessert, you were right in the middle of what happened out there. What happened? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, really. Um, we were riding along there in fourth or fifth place, and uh, there was a pile of lap cars running in the and the fast group when they're all supposed to be on the bottom and then a, a, one car behind us is just beating on my the rear of my car for two laps and we're, we're in a line of traffic and there's nowhere to go and it's it's ridiculous and we have a good race car it's tore up now and i just feel terrible for andy belmont's team and i don't know we'll try to soldier through it get it fixed as much as we can and go on to iowa try to try to do better there. disappointed driver looking forward to the next race let's listen in this bill kimball Works on the 44 car. I'll get lunchbox over here on the left fender. All right. You have lunchbox on the left fender. And you got to get it on the car. You'll come back in and do the pit stop. Yes. Well, the Kimmel crew is definitely huddled up. It sounds like you caught a piece of the action up there, Bill Kimmel. How bad is the car? Or is it too early to tell you? You really haven't had a chance to look at it. No, I can't. I can't see. Uh, our spotter's telling us, trying to tell us as much damage as we can. Frank said he can see over the hood. It's been up some. Uh, looks like we got both fenders down in the tires, um, and I can't really tell, Dominic. I've got to get the tires off the fenders so the roll. Frank said uh, doesn't look like there's any oil or water coming out of it, so that's a good thing. So uh, it's Salem. Remember, I said we got to keep the fenders on it, and uh, we just took care of that problem. So now we got to get the fenders off of it. All right, and right now those fenders are actually caved in. Remember, under red flag situation, you cannot work on your car. They can't work on it until it goes back yellow. 
Well, there are some cars rolling around the racetrack. A few of them are undamaged, but clearly the field has been reduced in number. The pace car is on the track as the ARCA officials are still trying to clean it up. We'll come back. Let's hope there's racing and not more wrecking when we do. Welcome back to the Kentuckiana Ford Dealers 200 here at Salem Speedway in Salem, Indiana. The ARCA Remax Series debut here on MAV TV. Glad you could join us. Field circling around under caution on the outside is the 46 car early leader Matt Carter. And uh, this is going to be a very different race when they do go back to green, Mike Miller. Well, yeah, we've got a whole, less, a whole bunch less cars after that big, big old wreck. And Matt Carter takes the green flag up on the outside. The lead lap cars are up there. The cars are lap down on the bottom of the track. You can see a very long line of lead lap cars. And oh, many here, of oh, this. Ken Schrader is getting a little racy out there right off the green flag and takes the lead. So the pole sitter has moved to the front for the first time. Great job of passing. Just that's Kenny Schrader for you. And Matt Carter looks like he's coming under attack from a couple more cars up from behind. So he drops into second position behind Schrader in that number 52. Schrader looking good out front. Took him a while to get, uh, I think, maybe confident or at least comfortable with how things were going to go. But now he knows he's got a fast car. He's going to get to the front, see if he can't scoot away. Well, the other interesting thing is I think the, the tire pressures were down a little bit. Matt probably uh, felt a little bit of a wiggle. And uh, Mr. Schrader having seven quadrillion laps under his belt uh, was aware of... Uh, lower air pressures and he said hey we can do this that's a lot of laps and certainly Ken Schrader has got a, quite a few of them here at Salem Speedway in ARCA cars cup cars and about everything else with four wheels you can drive he's also a bit of a two-wheeled enthusiast in fact made a cross-country trip on his motorcycle to get from one cup race to the next and now he is leading this one we see Justin Allgaier in the 16 car getting pretty racy he's the one knocking on Matt Carter's door right now more correctly on the uh, on the rear spoiler a little bit well again he's got to get fully alongside of them uh, coming off uh, off a of two before he can uh, make the pass and that's the problem uh, historically at Salem is that you, you know you, you got to get alongside the game. There's really kind of one line. You have to make the pass before you get to the turn. And, it, you know, you have to be committed to doing that. Ken Schrader can kind of put the wide load sign on up front there and keep anybody from coming around. Here goes Carter down to the low side, but he's only going to get a half a fender up in there. And, and Schrader drives off the corner and stays in the lead. Well, the other place he can pass is off of four, but it narrows up so much that, that you have to be very careful because uh, the car gets a little wiggly and, you know, it's it's... You can pass going into one, uh, but the ideal place to pass is going down the back stretch, especially if uh, the guy has any respect for him. Now they're going to get back into traffic just a little bit as these fast lead lap cars have caught up to some of the tail enders, the ones who started on the bottom line when we went back to green. So Schrader's got to pick his way through the traffic, beginning with the number 21 here of uh, Michael Disdier from France. So the French driver in the 21 car is in front of Schrader. And he's staying up there on the racing line. He's not uh, dropping down to the bottom, as you might expect. There he goes. He sees that flag and moves over. That was uh, fortunate for uh, Schrader. Allgaier, in the meantime, has taken over the number two spot from Matt Carter. So the 16 car is tucked in behind the 52 of Schrader. A little more traffic in front of them. Carter trying up, having a look up on the high side. And one of those damaged race cars is going to go a lap down. Salem Speedway has not been kind to about a third of the field here already in this one. So we have a, a much reduced field of cars from the original 38. Here's a look at the pass that Allgaier was able to make on Carter. Schrader gets checked up behind the 21 car. Allgaier gets a little bit of a move and drops immediately down to the bottom. That's a nice way to go. Yes, again, coming off of four, uh, he, got, uh, he got the job done. And is able to slip in front there. Nothing Matt Carter could do at that point, just as the 21 car moved out of the way. So Ken Schrader leads now with Justin Allgaier behind him. Let's see if Allgaier has anything for our leader. But in the meantime, we're going to run downstairs once again. Here's Don Radeball. Don, what do you have? The most recent winner at Salem Speedway, Justin Allgaier in the 16th car, chasing his hero, Ken Schrader. It was Schrader who first sponsored Justin Allgaier in a quarter midget so many years ago. And right now he's got that quarter midget kid right off his left rear quarter as Allgaier continues to chase his legend, Ken Schrader.
Ken Schrader has made a career out of helping younger drivers. Is uh, one of his more recent uh, prodigies, you might say, is motocross supercross legend Ricky Carmichael is now in a Ken Schrader car, making his stock car racing second career. So Schrader's uh, helped out all Dyer. Now he's helping out another up-and-coming stock car driver. This is great racing, uh, Brian. Schrader is edging away just a little bit from Allgaier, former Salem winner. Carter dropping back another couple of car lengths, and it's spreading out just a little bit. Traffic doing that, or are these cars just coming in? The tire's starting to work for them. Well, I think everybody's just uh, being careful here, making sure that the car's underneath them. That's it. We've got a long day ahead of us here. They're spreading out just a little bit, but it looks as though they're just poised for some more action here at Salem Speedway. Ken Schrader leads. Took him a while to get there from the pole. Matt Carter, who was our early leader, started from the outside of the front row. He's sitting back in third spot, and Justin Allgaier is in between. We've got a report from the pits. Here's Don. Second-generation racer Billy Leslie rolls to his pit. No power on the Titan tire four. They're going to roll it behind the wall and go to work on it. Billy's father, Tracy, of course, the 1988 Arca Remax Series national champion. Son Billy's not having a good day at Salem. Mike, is it a little more painful for you to see an 18 car go behind the wall? Uh, no comment. <laughs> that was Mike Miller's racing number for many years in the American Speed Association. Ken Schrader in the 52, his traditional number here in ARCA and other series as well. Is our leader, Allgaier, getting closer to him now as they work through traffic around the 14 of Chase Mattioli in the Protec and Associates Dodge. Among the cars going a lap down is also the 26, Brad Smith. Again, heavy traffic, Brian. Uh, you guys are going to have to be very, very careful getting through this stuff. There's that blue flag being shown to those cars that are about to go a lap down, and there is a lot of traffic once again. As the and these guys are kind of racing each other, too, you know, the lap cars. Of and, course. You know. With as few cars as remain in the field, we're talking about well into the top 20 are cars going down a lap. So these guys are all racing for their own positions. There goes Schrader up on the high side of the 32 of Dominic Casola. Can't get around him just yet. All Dyer's right there behind him. Probably waiting to see which way Kenny goes. And uh, if there's a hole on the other side, he'll, he might choose that. Schrader's going to go down low. All is going to be obliged to do that. Little bit of contact. Schrader letting that 32 car know he's coming by in no uncertain terms. Just didn't have the bike getting off the two there to, to, to make the pass. But 32 car also a little slow getting, uh, you might say, out of the way, not responding to those move over flags or the obvious signs that the leaders are coming up. Now they've got a little bit of clear track. Let's see if Justin Allgaier has anything for Ken Schrader, the great veteran up front. And as they work their way up on these high banks, we're going to take a little bit of a break here as we take a look at the top five. Scott Speed started fifth, and that's where he's running now. Welcome back once again to Salem Speedway and the Kentucky Anna Ford Dealers 200. The Arca Remax Series debut here on MAP TV. Pole sitter Ken Schrader, former Salem winner Justin Allgaier, class of the field right now. They've edged away from everybody else. Yep, uh, they've got their cars just right right now, and uh, they're set and sail. Somewhat in the distance behind them, the bright green number 60 car of Patrick Sheltra. And with him is that 44 of Frank Kimmel. They have repaired the damage enough to keep that car going, and it's never a comfort to see that 44 anywhere around you. The nine-time champ, Frank Kimmel, is always... Oh, oh another that. spin. Pretty much the same spot on the racetrack, back stretch, and it is the 32 car, Dominic Casola, that we saw go a lap down a while ago to Ken Schrader. He's uh, twisted around on the racetrack, and the ARCA officials are headed that way. Let's go to Don Radebaugh. Transmission troubles for the 46 of Matt Carter. He cannot get the car in fourth gear. They'll go to work on it. They'll give it some Sunoco gas and change right side tires. In fact, while they're here, while they have this moment under caution, they're going to go with all four new Hoosier tires on the 46 car, but I don't know that that will cure their transmission troubles. He can't get it in fourth gear. That's a bad thing at Salem Speedway. Well, Mike Miller, third gear is not going to cut it around this place. You need them all. We need them all, but uh, I think it's also interesting uh, that that last shot there actually showed you how much banking there is at Salem. Uh, one of the problems with television is that it kind of flattens the racetrack out, and you don't get a good appreciation for the amount of banking there really is. 
It is very steep banking here. You get a little bit of an idea because the cars are tilted towards us there up on the banking. Let's go back down to Don. With the crew chief on the 16, Larry Moore, chasing Ken Schrader out there. The car seems to be working very well. What's Justin saying about it? He said it's really good right now. We're, we're, we're scared of the test. I mean, of the tires, you know, but uh, we have, we're, we're going for it. We're going. What about the weather? Uh, we want to make halfway. We want to get to 100. We're not planning on betting for a little bit. We hope the tire will make it. That's Larry Moore, three-time World 100 winner from the Elder Speedway. Well, Mike Miller, they're worried about the tires, and right now uh, it looks like Larry's worried about his car out on the racetrack, and because Justin Allgaier has come to a stop in the middle of the track. Not oh, good. my God. The guy that's running second, got probably the best car out there right now, is stopped. Stopped in the middle of the racetrack. The entire field is going by, including Matt Carter, who stopped to change four tires. Well, he got it started. He's, He's got moving it again. Started. Let's go to Don. Well, Justin Allgaier was second on the track. Now he scored 13th. Larry Moore, crew chief, what happened? We don't know what happened. You just quit running. Car stopped running? Yeah, and then it took back off and started running. So I don't know what it is. Ignition trouble? Don't know? No. All right, well, keep an eye on it. The 16 car just shut off, and they have no idea why. The most frustrating gremlins are electrical, are they not? Yeah, and it's really odd because, you know, you get uh, in temperatures like about 65 to 85, and the cars seem to always work. You get below 65 degrees, and you have trouble. And you get above 90 degrees, and you have trouble. I mean, it's kind of a little sweet spot in there that the cars have the least amount of trouble. Well, not, that, not that they don't have trouble. We'll try to sort out the mystery. Meanwhile, Schrader's on pit road. If all goes well, this will be Ken Schrader's only pit stop of the race. He says the handle is absolutely perfect. Don't change a thing. Just give me four new Hoosier skins and some Sunoco racing gas, and he should be good to go the distance as they come around to the left side. The left side Hoosiers will go on. That's it. That's all. Schrader, his one and only pit stop in Salem. He hopes the strategy works. Mike, these guys are going about their pit stop uh, deliberately, shall we say. Don't want to make a mistake. Not fast, but, you know, they're getting it done. They're getting it done. I also noticed that Kenny's using a lot of uh, uh, brake. You can see a lot of brake dust coming off that left front. Well, there you go at Salem Speedway. Perhaps uh, you need to use a lot of braking. Here's the 16 of Justin Allgaier. Likewise, his crew going to work. Not a big problem when you only have one pit stop. You're not going to lose a lot of track position because almost everybody came down pit road. Back behind the pace car, they're rolling again, and we expect them to be racing under green when we return. Stay with us here on MAP TV. Pace car heads to pit road. We're going back racing here with lead lap cars up on the outside, and the green flag waves once again at Salem Speedway, and already we've got uh, cars jockeying for the lead. The leader is the 46 Matt Carter, who started from the outside of the front row and pitted a little while earlier than the rest of the cars that have just gone back out. So Carter's there. Scott Speed did not stop. He's in second position. And he is, that is his best position in the race so far. He started fifth, went back to tenth, moved his way up to fifth, and now he's second. Here comes Frank Kimmel in the 44 car. Just in front of him is that 60 bright green car of Patrick Sheltra. And Justin Allgaier, who did stop, is currently in seventh position. Wow, he lost a lot of spots on the track, and he's already made up a few. There is Sheltra, the bright green car, in fifth position. Looking for Ken Schrader, who stopped. Didn't have the fastest stop, but he's working. Here's a couple of guys racing for position we haven't seen. The 99 is Ricky Stenhouse. And there's Ken Schrader in the 52, working his way in between those guys. Your leaders, Matt Carter, in that white 46. He led early, dropped back to third, and now he's on the point again. And pulling away. There's Shelter in the 60, and he and Frank Kimmel have been right together on the racetrack for quite a while. Oh, a oh. oh, little bit of contact there with Kimmel. Bump that black car, the 93, up, up on the high side. That was Justin Lofton who was involved in that crash. And he's back out there. Shelter, that green car is pretty easy to spot. And it's in clearly in the windshield right now. Frank Kimmel in the 44. It's third and fourth place on the track right now. Uh, through three and four, you want to be up next to the wall, but you don't want to run into the wall. I mean, the best place to be is two inches off the wall. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the guy here in the second of all uh, 
lost that two inches of clearance. Yep, he tagged it up there. Didn't look like a whole lot of serious damage, but it certainly got his attention. He's got a little bit of help on the way by by some of the lead lap cars. Matt Carter is your leader. There's that uh, Scott Speed car, the Red Bull number two. He's running in second position. Not far behind the leader either, and there's another big cluster of cars here. Some are lead lap cars, and some are not. Trouble a brewing. Oh, they do get close to that wall up there on the high side. In four, there's Scott Speed. Now that shelter car has come up behind him, the bright green car. Kimmel is there as well. Kenny Schrader working his way forward, as is Allgaier. And lead lap cars working up on the high side, hoping those lap cars stay down low. This should be good racing coming up right here now. Oh, contact uh -oh. between Kimmel and Sheltra. Kimmel scoots through. Sheltra misses the wall, but he's going to be slowed down. Take another look at this. Watch the contact between the red 44 and the green 60. Well, it looks like the 60 came up just a little bit, and that was enough. Kimmel made contact. The 60 missed most of the wall. Let's go down to Don Radeball. Don? Well, the 46 car has been to victory lane at Salem Speedway many, many times, but not with Matt Carter at the helm leading here at Salem. What a, what a story this is with Scott Speed hanging right in there, running second with veteran Ken Schrader in his rear view mirror. This is going to be good to the finish, gentlemen. Scott Speed takes the lead from Matt Carter, driving that Larry Clement car. Of course, Clement was Kimmel's car owner for all nine of his championships. A super great pass in the restart, a fantastic pass. Scott Speed leads for the first time. The former Formula One driver made a beautiful move. Take another look at it here, Mike Miller. Yes, sir. He's fully, he gets fully alongside him going into three, and the car sticks, and he gets on the gas early. Very impressive. Door handle to door handle, if they had door handles, a nice move by Scott Speed to lead this race for the first time in front of Matt Carter. There's Ken Schrader alongside, down on the inside of Carter as well. Schrader looking for the number two position, maybe the lead. Nope, not going to nope. get it. He didn't get the he didn't get the bike. Now here he comes up inside again. He's trying to hug that low line. He's got a nose in front for second and does make it this time. Down the back stretch. Ken Schrader. Nice job. Let's see as he comes up behind Scott Speed. If he's got he's something. For, oh, he's got brand new tires, and Speed, of course, did not pit. That could be the difference. Yeah, now watch this. He's got to get fully alongside him going down the back stretch. Not nope. enough. Nope. Didn't get the bite off, too. So Ken Schrader's got to settle back in. Let's take another look at the move he did make for second. Well, it's scary because you don't know if the car is going to stay down there or if you're going to run into the 46. You know, you're just hoping and praying that that baby sticks. Well, Ken Schrader must have felt good about the way those new tires are feeling right now. And he's up behind Scott Speed. He's down on the inside every now and then, but he still just can't seem to make enough of a move on that two car to get by. Here he is alongside again. And this time he gets in front. Is he going to make it stay there? Yep, this time he's done. Justin Allgaier is also creeping back into the picture, so we may see the 52 and the 16 back together again after both of them stopped for tires. Allgaier had his problems with some sort of mystery gremlin, but he drops in behind Scott Speed in third spot now. Take another look at this scramble for positions. Allgaier's in the blue car, Carter in the white, Schrader comes through on the inside to take the lead. Nice move. Look at how high Matt Carter goes up against the wall there, way up in the loose stuff. You talk about scary, Mike. That's scary. Yeah, I think uh, Scott Speed's uh, tires are starting to hurt him a little bit at this point. Well, he may be due for a pit stop, and if he is, of course, we'll be on top of it. Take a look at your leaderboard as we get ready to go to a short break. While we were away, a caution came out, and Ken Schrader went down onto pit road to use two more tires, therefore the entire 10 that he was allotted. 175 laps down here in our Kentuckiana Ford Dealers 200. Let's show you some action while we were away. Bang! The 11 comes up into the 99, who had already made some contact with the car in front of him. Mike Miller, these guys uh, getting a little anxious here towards the end of the race? I imagine. You know, there's, uh, the, the race is uh, counting down now. Now you got to uh, start getting with the program. So once again, we go back to green, and it is Justin Allgaier out front who did not come down pit road. So he stays out, inherits the lead, and look who's behind him, the 44, Frank Kimmel. It's an uh, interesting uh, strategy. Uh, 
him staying out and Schrader pitting. We'll see how this uh, plays out. Well, with so few laps left in the race, Ken Schrader's got the tires that he wants. He came in and got the last two that he can. He's not going to stop anymore. And boy, that car, look at him dive underneath the 11 car. Now. Yeah, he could, if he doesn't run out of laps, he could easily get to the front. But Justin Allgaier's car is very good as well. Look at the look at the gap that he's put on Frank Kimmel. Here comes Schrader on Kimmel for second, but it's a long way up to Justin Allgaier. This is going to be great. This is going to be a great finish. Well, those two cars have been together, the 16 and the 52 of Allgaier and Schrader, all race long. And once again, here in the waning laps at Salem Speedway, they find themselves in contention for the win. Schrader in the 52 started from pole. Allgaier, who has won here quite a few times in the past, there's more contact. The 99 and 11 aren't done with each oh. other. Oh, and this time they get the 09 in there with them. John West Townley collected the 11, and man, those... Was that a little bit of retaliation? I don't know. Those two cars were involved know. earlier. Let's see. He's a little bit sideways going in there. Contact and nowhere to go for the 09. He clips the front of the 11 car, and there's damage to both. And look at the 46. Yeah, Matt Carter, he missed it all, but he sure got checked up there along with that 60 car of Patrick Sheltra. So attention to the 11 down on pit road. Not the kind you want this late in the race. Big guy body work going on. And we will take another break as we're going to go to the checkered flag when we return here at Salem Speedway. Welcome back. Coming out from under a caution flag to green again with Justin Allgaier leading Ken Schrader, the pupil leading the teacher, the young warrior leading the old Jedi master out there. And let's see who's going to prevail at the end of this one, Mike Miller. It's going to be pretty interesting. Once again, they pull away from the rest of the field. The two best cars on the track today. Uh, you know, Kenny's got better tires on than Justin. However, uh, they both have another heat cycle on tires, and heat cycles are very critical to tires. So he doesn't have quite the, uh, Kenny doesn't have quite the advantage he had before the restart. All guy are a little loose every now and then, but of course they're trying to get, get the temperature back in these things after rolling around slowly under caution. Not a lot of distance between these two race cars, but there is quite a bit of track in between them and the rest of the field. These guys can just match race, it looks like, to the checkered flag now. Yeah, no kidding. They're, you know, they're, right now they're the class of the field. And if they don't go too fast, they can even stay out of traffic for a while. Schrader keeps looking down on the inside, but just doesn't have enough to make a definitive move. Well, Justin's got a very good car today. Loose up off the corner, but plenty of track to let it be that way. And they say loose is fast. Obviously, Allgaier, he's got a very fast car, and he's working. Yeah, Kenny got a little loose there, too, coming up, too. Well, they're trying awful hard. They had one lap car in front of them briefly, but now they've cleared that, and it's clean track for the length of the straightaway here at Salem. Justin's looking at his mirror. He's saying, where's Kenny going to go? What am I going to do here? He's, you know, the heart rate's up. But, you know, it's, you know, getting late in the race. This is... Uh, this is what it's all about right here. Veteran Norm Benning down on the inside in the 84 car. We've seen him in the uh, what used to be called the Bush North Series over the years. But it's all Geyer and Schrader. They're not paying any attention to anybody else out there. Just one another. Schrader keeps looking down inside, but just hasn't got enough to really push it. Now he's faking right. Is he going to go left? Well, Justin used up the whole racetrack that time. He's using about a car and three quarters because he gets sideways and makes it extra wide. Uh -oh. oh, caution out. A caution out right now. It's Gerhardt is stalled on the track. You can't see it here, but that's the problem. And uh, we got smoke pouring off the brakes here. Is the 60 car checking up hard? Justin Allgaier up on the high side there as that shelter car number 60 is showing some of the damage from the shunt earlier. So Kenny Schrader is now poised behind Justin Allgaier, and let's see what happens when we go back to green. Should be pretty quickly. The pace car is on the track. Here's the Mustang with the yellow lights flashing. And Justin Allgaier with Kenny Schrader. They're going to get bunched up again. Is that going to make any difference to these two guys? They seem to be able to pull away pretty much at will. No, well, of course, uh, Kenny knows that he's a little faster than the uh, third place car, and Justin is only concerned about Kenny so those guys are you know in a world all by themselves circling around behind the pace car the crowd has come to its feet because they know that this is going to be one of those short lap short track shootouts and it should be a very very good one 
Matt Carter has uh, come up into third position there. What do you think so far of the debut race on radial tires here in the Arca Remax series? I think Hoosier's done a great job. Uh, obviously, uh, nobody's had any uh, tire issues. Uh, working out pretty good and we've seen good close racing uh, certainly among the two best cars on the track right now but all day long we've here seen we go. good, yep, here we go back to green with Allgaier and Schrader they quickly put a few car lengths on Matt Carter back there in third he's got his hands full and a race of his own going on but this is the one we want to pay attention to can Ken Schrader out Fox young Justin Allgaier here on Salem Speedway Allgaier's won here before and knows how to get it done well, there's always the issue of getting up there inside and and not being able to make the pass and then wrecking and, you know, you take a for sure second and turn it into a DNF. Last lap for Justin Allgaier and Ken Schrader. If Schrader's going to get it done, he's got to get it done between here and the finish line. It's not going to happen. Justin Allgaier is going to win Great again. Great job. At Salem Speedway, great job indeed as the checkers fly and that couple of laps shootout and Justin Allgaier will celebrate the victory. The first one to congratulate him, the Ken pole sitter Ken yeah. Schrader. We'll awesome. be back. The ARCA Remax series on MAV TV is being brought to you by Remax, serving your real estate needs above the crowd. And by Lucas Oil Products, made in the USA and sold to the world. Young Justin Allgaier has prevailed here today. He's put on a show, and now he's put on a smoke show for the crowd. Soon enough, he'll get out of that car, and we'll hear from him. Justin Allgaier, the winner. Ken Schrader, the first one out of the car to congratulate him. And there you see Matt Carter, who started on the front row alongside. Frank Kimmel, the nine-time champ. Best he could do today was fourth. And as we look at the rest of the results, let's go downstairs. Pretty happy scene. It's been since 2003 since a driver went back-to-back -back with victories at Salem Speedway. That was until Justin Allgaier checked in. Very nice work today. Congratulations. How on earth did you hold off Ken Schrader? I'll tell you what, Kenny uh, is a, a great competitor, and there's nobody else I wanted to run, uh, run with right there at the end of the race. Early in the race, I followed him around and, and just kind of you know tried to let save the tires, and I knew they were doing the same. But I can't say enough for these guys on the crew. We pitted twice, made some adjustments on tires and everything, and oh man, this is awesome. I mean, I gotta thank Ag Tech and Hoosier Diamond West for getting us here. This Monte Carlo was awesome, and you know I gotta thank my family and I gotta thank God because without him on those last couple of laps, I was I was sweating bullets because I knew Schrader was coming. What about early in the race when the car actually stalled? You were running second, and, and it stalled, and it shuffled you back to 13th in the lineup. What happened? Well, uh, I'm the wiring guy on the car, and obviously I've got some uh, things. Issues. I, issues, yeah, that I need to, to fix. And, and uh, something happened electrically, and, and it killed the motor. I uh, shut off all the switches and tried getting it fired back up. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of spots, but that's kind of where we went with the pit stop strategy we took, and it worked out for the better. You're the current point leader. Is it too early to think about a championship? Oh, it's never too early. We got to think about it all the time. But, but to be the point leader leaving Salem and to win and be back to back, it makes it feel awesome. I have a lot of respect for Shelby Howard to to be the last one to do it, and so for us to be able to do it, it's 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 just unbelievable. Congratulations, very nice work. Thank you very much. Following the second race of the season, Justin Allgaier gets the win and leads the points championship over nine-time champ Frank Kimmel. And uh, let's go back downstairs. Don Radebaugh is with Ken Schrader. Well, Ken Schrader, you had an interesting day, a kind of a crummy first pit stop, but you came back and uh, made that second pit stop, put two new right side tires that seemed to make all the difference for you. Well, it got us up back where we could be the first loser, but Justin was, uh, he's really good. I'm happy for them guys. Uh, man, I remember when that kid was born and uh, he drove his butt off. Did you have anything for him, or were you being extra kind, being so close to the family? Oh, I, I, I wanted him bad. I wanted to beat him, just like he, and you know, he told me, he said, yeah, I, I would give it to you if you got there. But uh, we were, we were, I gave it everything I had for sure. 
You won the pole. You finished second in the race. Is this a pretty good day for Ken Schrader these days? We'll take it. Uh, you know, our ARCA record hasn't been too bad. We ran our truck once this year and ran fourth with it. So we run third at Daytona with a different driver. So we're, we're okay. When do we get to see you again on the REMAX Series Tour? Toledo, May 20th, I think. Let's go with May 18th. You'll be late if you show up on the 20th. May 18th. All right, we'll look forward to that where uh, Ken Schrader has won three events at Toledo Speedway. How does Ken Schrader keep track of where he's racing? Well, here's where we are going to be racing. Show up at the racetrack on the dates on your right there, May 8th, starting with May 18th, July 26th, and then come on home and enjoy the rest of the ARCA Remax Series on MAV TV. Hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly did, and for my broadcast partners, Mike Miller and Don Radeboff, we're most glad that you could join us. We look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Brian Drever. So long, everybody.